Welcome back to the Law Father podcast. As always, we're here in Law Father studios or in Law Father headquarters, rather. And uh, as you may know, if you're watching along in the video, I have the same suit on, same tie on, and we're going to talk about the assault rifle ban. Yep, that's right. Uh, I talked about it last week that we were going to mention it. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't want to short anything. And we did talk about the Ronnie O'Neill trial. And we're going to talk about that in, I think, a little bit more detail as we get uh, closer to the sentencing phase of that trial. Because that is a, uh, a capital um, death row type trial. So, um, or death penalty, excuse me, uh, trial. So, do want to look at that in more detail. But something that did come up over the past couple of weeks, and it's it's really... It's become kind of a national topic, not necessarily the the ban itself, okay? But assault rifles have been for the past few years a a major uh, a major topic to to discuss, right? It's become highly politicized. It is blamed for uh, mass shootings. It is blamed for and not the ban, but assault rifle or assault weapons in and of themselves um, are blamed for a lot, okay? And, you know, maybe there is a question of do these assault weapons cause uh, more mass murders, right? Or mass shootings, which lead to mass murders. Um, is there, and I think the, the question from that really becomes also, what is an assault weapon, right? It, and, and it's, man, it's really a question that I'm not sure there's a, a right or wrong answer to. Okay, uh, the the most common one that we see here as civilians, right, is the AR-15. Stop the AR-15. Ban the AR-15. The AR-15 is an assault, is an assault rifle. The AR-15. Hey, that is responsible for all of the mass shootings and everybody who is killed in a mass shooting. And look, I'm not trying to downplay mass shootings. Okay, but I do want to look at from a legal standpoint, right. What's allowed and what's not allowed? Because we do have a constitution here in the United States, and that constitution does allow the right to bear arms, okay? But let's start with this, AR-15. And I think I've heard this somewhere before, and I honestly don't remember where. Um, sometimes I hear things and I remember them, but I can't tell you where I hear them. Um, but AR, you would think, okay, we're talking about an assault rifle, ar 15. Uh, so AR must stand for assault rifle. Uh, no, <laughs> it doesn't. Uh, it's actually just um, the the original model of it. It's the armor right rifle. Okay, that's it. AR stands for armor armor light rifle. And here's the thing. It, it's just the AR 15 is a pretty light gun. Okay, and, and I don't know if that was what their intention was by light, okay, um, but it, it's, for what it is, it's light, um, it shoots high velocity rounds, it comes in either 223 or 556, five, okay, um, if you look at it from, try to put this in some perspective, uh, 223, those of you who are familiar with guns, uh, a 223 round by diameter is the same round, same diameter round as a 22. Okay, um, 22s are typically your smallest type handguns. Okay, um, and I, I don't, I actually don't know if they make a smaller round than a 22. Okay, uh, five five six is what's also known as a NATO round, uh, which I think <laughs> may play into more of the idea that it is a, uh, it, it is meant for military, but um, it, it's a standardized round. This five five six round, um, that it's. I believe what NATO uses, which is why it's called a NATO round. Um, but that's what it is. So um, it's an elongated round, right? So you have um, the casing, which is where all the gunpowder goes, and you have uh, the slug, which is the part in front, uh, pointed tip. Um, but it's so if you were to look at a, a 22 round and you were to look at a 223 round, the 223 round, both the casing and the slug are a lot longer than what you would find in the handgun version. All right. Now, what does all that mean, right? Well, let's look at it, okay? Because I, I've had a, a lot of experience with these guns. Uh, when I was at Pinellas County, we were actually issued AR-15s. Uh, it was coming pretty, and, and I don't remember the, I mean, I started in, I don't remember the year that I started. I started in 06, right? I worked in law enforcement from 06 to 2012. Um, 
and I just I don't remember the year that California had. I believe it was a bank robbery, and it, it made the news. It was I think they played it live actually on TV, where uh, it was a couple guys, uh, maybe two three guys who held up a bank, and LAPD was severely undergunned in in it, and uh, the the robbers had these big powerful. I believe they were actually automatic weapons. Okay, um, here's the key. Right to touch on the automatic weapon part, an AR-15 by nature is considered a semi-automatic, which means every time you pull the trigger is a single round. Okay, an automatic weapon, you pull the trigger, it shoots usually in bursts of three. Okay, that's the difference. And automatic weapons are banned, um, rightfully so. Right, I, I can't find a legitimate reason that you need a an automatic weapon for any kind of defense. So. Pinellas County, when I was there, they decided, hey, because these, you know, because criminals are becoming better and better armed, we need to become better and better armed. So we were actually issued uh, AR-15s, and you know, I my partner took his out a lot. I didn't take mine out a lot, um, mostly because he had his, and I became the guy that would go hands on with people. So that was uh, that was our dynamic, and we just knew it, and that was just how we operated. But what we what we look at here is this. So California, right, was the first state, leave it to California to be the first state to do something like this. Um, But they were the first state in the nation to ban assault weapons. Okay. And they did this 30 years ago. All right, a little bit more than 30 years ago, uh, after there was a a shooting in an elementary school that uh, killed five children and wounded 29. All right. And that was in Stockton, California. That's what started this for them. Now, let's Let's look at, in in the original law, the idea was they wanted to to ban the manufacture and sale of specific models, okay? They used uh, 60 models that they they banned, okay? I'm sure one of these on this list, AK-47, kind of the the movie version right now. Look, it's a a Russian-made rifle. Uh, I believe Kalishnikov is the one who makes it. Uh, I believe they're fully automatic. they're, they're bad guns, right? Um, you know, they, I, I, I've seen and through training at, in law enforcement, hey, you know, the, these rounds, the rounds from an AK-47 will pierce most things. <laughs> um, there's a, a lot that it'll go through, right? So it is meant for killing. Uh, that's it. That's what that's meant for. But it would, be, it would be weapons like that that would have shown up on that original ban. I don't have a problem with that, right? But what happens is, is anytime you have one thing, you go, okay, I have a law, I can't use this, but I can make this other thing over here that acts similarly, but it's not the same model, right? So lawmakers in California, over time, they changed the law and changed the law, and they made it into more of a features-based definition, right? Does the gun do this, right? Uh, Most likely, does the gun have a high-capacity magazine? Right. Most AR-15s uh, have a high-capacity magazine. The magazine is where all your rounds go, right? And it feeds up automatically. So you have this big, long tube. Essentially, it's usually a, like a thin rectangle. You load your rounds into it, and it automatically feeds into. So what happens is the mechanics of it is you pull the trigger, round goes out. The force from that round go, going out, right, the, the kickback from it and, and all the gases and everything else, forces that next round up. Right, and there was a spring in the magazine pushing that round up as well. Um, that's how that's how that works. Okay, and so over time, California changed the 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 law to include that. Now, what what do they define an assault weapon as? And it is defined. Now, this is California law, right? So, not necessarily giving a legal analysis on California law, but looking at it from a, you know, what is this? And, hey, how, how do we break this down? And how does it impact maybe some of the other states? Because California at this time isn't the only state that has this, right? Uh, so, it is a rifle labeled an assault weapon if it is one of the three principal types. The first type is a semi-automatic center fire 14 rifle that does not have a fixed magazine but has one of the following prohibiting fi- features a pistol grip that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the rifle a thumb hole stock a folding or telescoping stock a grenade or flare launcher 
a flash suppressor, or a forward pistol grip. The second type is a semi-automatic centerfire rifle that has a fixed 15 magazine able to hold more than 10 rounds. The third type is a semi-automatic centerfire rifle that has an overall length of less than 30 inches. All right, that's straight from the California Penal Code. Now, a lot of what I described to you in terms of uh, what an AR-15 is does match that. It, it does, okay? So what happened, right? What happened to change this? Because there is no more assault rifle ban in California. You can walk around. Well, I don't know if you can walk around, but you can own an assault rifle in California now. Um, so that is legal as of uh, the past couple of weeks. So let's look at how this started. A and this judge has really come under a lot of scrutiny. Um, not really sure what I think because uh, from a legal perspective, I, I think he makes a lot of sense, but man, he, he really makes a mess of this opinion, okay? Um, this is how it starts, and I'm going to read it. Uh, I'm going to quote it, okay? Uh, like the Swiss Army knife, the popular AR-15 rifle is a perfect combination of home defense weapon and homeland defense equipment. Good for both home and battle, the AR-15 is the kind of versatile gun that lies at the intersection of the kinds of firearms protected under, and it cites a case, the District of Columbia v. Heller and the United States v. Miller. Um, yet the state of California makes it a crime to have an AR-15 type rifle. Therefore, this court declares the California statutes to be unconstitutional. All right. This is a state law case, overturning state law, and um, there, there was a federal assault rifle ban, but that has since expired. Okay. Here's the problem that I have with it. I don't have a problem with people owning AR-15s. I own an AR-15. Okay. It's locked in a gun safe. Um, I don't know why I do. Right. I mean, back it's back from when I was a deputy. I still have it. OK. Um, I don't know. It, it sits in a safe because, you know what, if I want to go to the range and shoot it, it's a fun gun to shoot. OK. Is it good for home defense? Absolutely not. <laughs> it's just not. I put it like this. OK. In all my years of clearing buildings. Right. And, and making sure that a building was safe. Right. So think about it like this. Uh, an alarm goes off, whether it's a house or a business, and there's a door open. Myself and another deputy, we would go into that building, and we would search that building to make sure there wasn't somebody inside. All right? Do you know what we brought with us? We brought our handguns with us, right? And look, you when you search a building like that, you search that building with a firearm out. You do. That's just how you do it because, look, you have a, an alarm going off, and you have a door that's open, all right? Two things that are kind of a recipe for uh, potential for bad. But you know what we didn't search with? We didn't search with our AR-15s that were in our trunks, right? Or locked in a, in a locking mechanism uh, on the cage uh, in the front seat of the car. Why? Right? Why wouldn't the AR-15? Yeah, hey, AR-15, yeah, it's good. It's powerful, right? Well, a couple of reasons. One, it's a long gun. It's long, right? That barrel is long. And you turn a corner and someone's right there, it's easy for them to grab. Okay? That's the easy explanation. Now let's look at another reason why, right? And I mentioned this before. It's a high-powered round. Okay? It goes through a lot of things, especially things that are soft. Right? So what do you typically find in a house? Drywall. Right? Most houses are made of drywall and wood studs. What do you think those AR-15 rounds are going through? drywall. Okay. Let's up the ante a little bit. Let's say there is an intruder in your house and you shoot that person with an AR. Yeah, I know it's kind of graphic. I'm sorry, but I'm making a point. That round goes through that person, right? Most likely that AR-15 round is going in and out that person. What do you think it's going next? Probably through the wall and whatever is on the other side of that wall. Okay. AR-15 is not a good choice for home defense. So from a legal perspective, on its face, do I agree with this opinion? Yes. The rationale of how we get there, I, I can't get behind, okay? Because if you want something for, for home defense, your best home defense weapon is a, is a shotgun, not a rifle, okay? And look, if you're, if you're worried about how it looks, right, that the AR-15 looks like an assault rifle, Okay, looks like something that should be 
only allowed in the military. I have a shotgun that looks just as bad as the AR-15 that I have, but it's still a shotgun, right? So we can't go by looks alone. Right? And, and, and look, it, a shotgun can do as much damage as an AR-15. Now, the difference, being, I'll, I'll give you the difference, right? So it's not just a, hey, this is what's better. Look, a shotgun has uh, generally little pellets, right? Sometimes there's a, a small slug inside, but it's if it's pellets, they're smaller, they don't penetrate as much, okay? So if there's somebody in your house, we're going to get graphic here for a second. I apologize, but I'm going to warn you that I'm about to get graphic for a second. You shoot somebody with a shotgun, okay? You're going to put a hole in that person. It's going to happen, okay? And it's not going to be small, right? But those those pellets or that slug, depending on what kind of round is in that, okay? What kind of shell is in that? It's not going to go through anything else, okay? And when you're in a situation where you have to make a shoot, you want to know what you're hitting, but you also want to know what's behind what you're hitting, okay? And if you're at your house, your kids are sleeping in the room next door, do you really want to risk firing an an AR-15 and going through somebody through a wall, okay? So that is the practical side of it. Uh, Handguns are good too, all right? Big heavy rounds, 40, 45, okay? A lot of stopping power, right? Uh, look, be that as it may, right, when, when you look at it, you, one of the beauty parts of using a shotgun for home defense is that you have to rack the shotgun. You have to slide the handle. And if you've ever seen an action movie where the guy holds it in one hand and he goes click, click, right, and it's loud and it's obnoxious, yeah, that should that's the warning, right? And, and you know, my hope, is that if I ever have somebody come in the house and I have to take out the shotgun, right, is that they hear that click, click, and they go away, right? You don't have that with the AR. So there's the uh, there's the, auto, the, the audio aspect to it, right? But anyway, we digress from the legal side of it. So let's jump back in to the legal side. And, you know, in, in this judge's opinion, he discusses that 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 there is you know plenty of lawful uses for an AR15 right or for an assault style rifle now one of them is that they're more accurate well yeah they are right they they are really accurate the longer a a barrel gets the more accurate accurate it becomes right so one of the beauty parts of using something like that in law enforcement was if you had a situation like that California bank robbery from however long ago it was, it predated 2006, I know that, and you have to take cover and you have to be 50 yards away, okay, you're not going to want to take that shot with your handgun. It's just not going to be accurate, okay? It's just not, right? Too short of a barrel, too much can go on. You're not going to want to take that shot with a shotgun, right? Yes, it has a longer barrel, but by the nature of it, those pellets spread out. And the further out it goes in distance, the more they spread out, okay? The AR-15 is is perfect for that application, right? Because it's light, you can it's mobile, you can move with it, and you can shoot accurately from, I, I want to say, I believe we did 50 yards from a, a prone, from a laying on your stomach position. Um, I think we did 100 there, and I think we did 50 from kneeling, if I remember correctly. Um, those of you in law enforcement who are listening, if I'm wrong, I apologize. Just spend some time, okay? I'm just trying to remember back. Uh, but anyway, highly accurate from those distances, okay? I know from 50, it's highly accurate. So that's a good thing because you need to be highly accurate when you're in public, all right? So there there are applications for it. Now, is it is it an application that should move on and, and, and live in our everyday life? You know, it's tough because we look at the Second Amendment, uh, Second Amendment, right? And part of the Second Amendment is that we should always have a militia at the ready. Well, if we need a militia at the ready, don't we need something that has the ability to act like somebody in a militia would need it to act, right? Now, keep in mind, this was written back when we just broke away from England, right? We, we were the new guys on the block, right? We didn't know if they were coming back, right? 
I mean, history tells us now that they didn't. Um, but should that change? Should that change that Second Amendment right to bear arms? And where does that get stopped, right? Where's the line? So it, it's really... It's really kind of an interesting thing. I mean, this judge goes on to talk about that uh, responsible gun owners worry about the ending point of every round fired. Uh, if shooting in home, shooting in self defense, a home defender wants every round to hit only attackers. Yeah, that's accurate. But you know, like I said in the beginning, I don't. The way this judge gets there just doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay, he probably should have stuck to more of the legal aspects and less of the, this is what's good for home defense. Because as I mentioned before, you can hit that, hit that person that broke into your house, but that round also can go right through that person. Okay. Um, you know, it, now look, here's, here's the flip side to that accuracy argument, which I, I guess this isn't wrong. <laughs> the attorney general in California, who was the other side of, of this one argues that better accuracy makes it a more dangerous weapon. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, the more times you can hit something more accurately, the more chances you have of killing something. So yeah. Um, tough to argue with that, but does it, does it mean that, does it, does that make any sense? Right. I mean, look, last week we talked about the Ronnie O'Neill trial. There are bad people in this world. Bad people are always going to find a way to do horrendous, heinous things just truth. Ronnie O'Neill didn't have an assault weapon in his house. Okay? He had an axe. And I think he had a shotgun. or Some kind of handgun. Something along those lines. It wasn't an assault rifle. Okay? It wasn't an AR-15, which by definition, AR is not an assault rifle. It's not. Okay? Um, looks like one. It looks bad. It, it looks like a, a military killing machine. Okay? But it's not necessarily an assault rifle. Yes, I suppose at its core, if you can be more accurate, you can do more damage, okay? Now, you know, the theory behind this was to stop mass shootings. I'm just not sure it hits the mark, okay? Look, if you took every assault rifle, that every assault rifle, every AR-15, and were able to somehow, I don't even know how you would do this, but let's just assume that you were able to get every single one of those out of the country, okay? Melt them all down. They don't exist anymore. Or maybe they, they were never invented. That person who wants to do that mass shooting is going to find a way, okay? And they're going to be just as accurate. It just is, okay? Look, can I change the magazine on my Glock 40 as quickly as I can my AR-15? Absolutely, Okay. Can I fit 14 rounds in, in my Caltech shotgun? Yeah, I can. And it's not banned. It's just shotgun, right? Can I do the same amount of damage which each, with each of those? Hypothetical, please don't jump on the bandwagon that I'm saying that I would do this because that would be ridiculous. But I'm making a point, right? I can do the same amount of damage with each of those, okay? Now... From a practical standpoint, the shotgun's going to take a lot longer to load back up, okay, because you got to go individual. But you can get 14 rounds in there. Seven. There, there's two chambers with seven, okay? Uh, and there's several shotguns out there like that now. Um, you know, the, between the, the Glock 40 and the AR-15, can I switch magazines out just as quick? Absolutely. I may actually, and I haven't actually timed this, um, but I think I can actually change my Glock 40 magazines quicker than the AR-15. Okay, they're smaller, a little bit easier to handle because the rounds are smaller. Can I do just as much damage with it? Sure, because think about it like this. When we're talking about a mass shooting, we're not talking about shooting over great distances, right? And we're not really talking most likely about someone who's really aiming a whole lot, right? So it's there's a saying, uh, spray and pray, right? And I think that's kind of what goes on. And look, I've never actually seen it. Now, we did some pretty in-depth uh, mass shooter training uh, in Pinellas County. Uh, active shooter training is what it was called. And, uh, you know, it, it's it's pretty intense. And it's really, really good training. It, it's really eye-opening. Um, but anyway, uh, I, I don't think you have a lot of this. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to aim and I'm going to I'm going to shoot, right? I think it's I'm going to just shoot, 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 reload, shoot, 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 shoot. I, I, I just... 
I don't think by banning an AR, you're necessarily accomplishing that. Um, and I just, the accuracy point of it, I, I just think is really, um, you know, in, in the legal world, we'll call it red herring, right? It, it's just something that exists out there. It's an argument that you can make, but does it really mean anything? No, you, you kind of have to answer the argument, but I just, I don't think it means a whole lot. Okay. Um, so it, it, what we, what we talk about, um, you know, the, the Supreme Court of the United States has recognized that the Second Amendment, Second Amendment guarantee includes a right to keep and bear firearms that have some reasonable relationship to the preservation or efficiency of a well-regulated militia. And that came from the Miller case. Um, and this California court states that it implies that a weapon that is commonly owned and that is useful for the common defense for a militia member is also protected by the Second Amendment. So, yeah, maybe, okay. Um, look, they're not easy to conceal, right? So, it, it, it's not like you're going to have a guy walking down the street with, a AR, uh, with an AR-15 in, you know, in his pants, right? You may have a handgun, not an AR-15. I know there's a YouTube video out there that shows a guy pulling all types of stuff out of his pants. I don't know, right? You've seen the kids' pants these days. They're skin tight. You're not fitting an AR-15 in there. <laughs> um, but... You know what? At the end of the day, it, someone who wants to do bad is going to do bad. All right. Um, you know, should AR-15s be banned? In my opinion, no. Should true assault rifles, uh, AK-47s, and things of, of that nature, uh, automatic weapons? I believe it's MP5 is essentially uh, is a, a fully automatic weapon. Yeah, those those should be banned. Okay, I, I don't see a Reasonable use for those. Uh, I don't hunt, but I could see, uh, you know, possible a use for an AK-40, or excuse me, uh, AR-15 uh, in a hunting application, okay? Um, but like I said, I don't hunt, so I don't really know. But, you know, 50, 100 yards out and you got a deer and you want to you be highly accurate, right? It would come back to the accuracy thing. You want to be highly accurate from 50 to 100 yards out. And uh, you know, do you need a high-capacity magazine for that? No, probably not, but... You, know, you can get a couple rounds off, I guess. I don't know how fast a deer is. If you can only get one round off, I have no idea, right? I'm guessing at this point. But anyway, um, there are uh, six other states and the District of Columbia had followed California in adopting assault weapons bans. Um, and like I said, there was a federal ban. Uh, it, it expired in uh, 2004. Uh, I don't believe it's been renewed. I believe there is no longer. Well, there's not because, well, we can own uh we can own AR-15s, and you can technically own, uh, if your state allows, an assault rifle um, because it's not banned by the federal government. But could the California ruling have impacts on other states? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, someone would have to bring an action, right? So the court, court can't just go in, in, say, the District of Columbia because I don't know what the other six states are, but there are six other states. Someone in D.C. can go, hey, the, or excuse me, a judge in D.C. can't just go, hey, um, yeah, I want to bring this up and uh, I want to relook at this. No, someone has to actually be a plaintiff and a defendant and bring a case, go through the lower court, hit the court of appeals. And then uh, as what's happening in California right now, the state has appealed um, this uh, district court of appeals ruling it'll go up to the california supreme court so long as um the california supreme court accepts it as a case most likely the california supreme court will accept it as a case this is a uh, high enough uh, level of a topic to get into um but that is the uh, california assault rifle ban and uh you know a as i mentioned a few times how that judge gets there that judge's opinion that judge's thought process on home defense extremely flawed Okay, his analysis in the legal side of things, I think, holds some merit. Okay, I think it's a difficult argument. I think it's one that's, you know, kind of right down the middle here, and uh, you could go either way. But uh, ultimately, I think that judge was correct in overturning the assault rifle ban as it's written. Okay, maybe it just needs to be rewritten to, you know, tighten up a little bit and, uh, you know, take away some of those things that are truly, truly military type weapons, you know. Something with a grenade launcher uh, attached to it, which was uh, part of the assault weapon ban uh, in California. Yeah, those probably, you're not going to need that for home defense. You're probably not going to need that for the for the militia. Okay, can't imagine that fits in the Second Amendment, but 
anyway. Um, so stay away from those grenade launchers. Uh, if you own a gun, keep it safe. Keep it locked up. Keep it away from the kids. Teach your kids. Okay? Lawfather headquarters. Lawfather out.